Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this video I'm going to uh, show you the new generative expand which uh, comes with Photoshop Beta. Um, I've updated my Photoshop Beta to 25.0.2 which is the latest um, so you'll be able to see what can be what can be done with generative expand now generative expand is really just uh, the generative fill um, but it's made a little bit easier by being able to use the crop tool to make images larger in any direction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you through four images i've got here these are just jpegs and the reason why i've just picked jpegs to actually show you is um, because the generative fill still only has uh, a 1024 pixel limit so if you expand the whole edge of an image which might be four or five thousand pixels then you're going to get you know quarter to a fifth of the resolution so if it's just mainly for use on social media then uh, it's a good tool and you can have a lot of fun with it and that's what I'm going to show you today if you want to have higher resolutions in your images when you do this you really do need to 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 do a small section at a time uh, at 1024 by 1024 pixels so you you'd have to do multiple multiple takes within within photoshop but for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just show you these uh, these jpegs so um if you haven't already subscribed to my channel it'd be lovely for you to join me on my adventure i'm having a great time here on youtube and if you like this video please click like and I always welcome, always love to see your comments and uh, your points that you raise and any tips that you might have uh, down below. So uh, feel free to do that. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get started here. This is a, a shot I did recently. You'll see one of the videos not, not that long back. This is the Japanese tea gardens in uh, Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. This is the image that I ended up with. I've also got um, my most recent image, which you'll see is from uh, Chicago street in uh, san francisco with the bay bridge in the background and the cable cars coming up the hill i'm going to show you how we can expand that one i've also got a couple of black and whites which i'll take you through this is uh, montmartre so uh, beautiful beautiful basilica in montmartre uh, again a video that i did earlier so you're welcome to go back and and find this in my videos and you can see how i how, how i actually produced this image and then um one of my favourite photographs I've ever taken, actually, La Maison Rose, also in Montmartre in Paris. Uh, this was, um, yeah, one I had a lot of fun with. So there is also a video showing you a little bit of how this was done earlier. So let so let's get started. Well, we'll start off with the Japanese tea garden. So I'm just going to right click and uh, going to go to editing, and I'm going to send it over to Adobe Photoshop now. The generative fill and the generative expand functions are only available in Adobe Photoshop beta. So if you want to load that, um, you need to go into your Creative Cloud app. So you need to load the Creative Cloud app and you can click on that uh, Cloud app. And then you can see uh, you've got all apps up here you can click on. That tells you what I've got loaded here at the moment. And there's also a beta apps down here which you can click on and you can open you can try or, or buy other others here but generally I'm just using the Photoshop beta uh, and what I, what I do is I pay for the photographers pack uh, with Adobe and that gives you Lightroom um, classic and Lightroom mobile as well as Lightroom standard which you can use on um, iPads and things like that and also Photoshop and the beta versions as well which you can have a play with so one little important point and i'm not by any means promoting adobe i love their products but uh, i'm not sponsored in any way but if you do take out a subscription a monthly subscription it may seem quite high at the moment but what i've what i've discovered is is that they don't raise each year they don't raise the price and that keeps you motivated to stay with them and i've been with them since 2016 so i'm paying something like around eight dollars a month uh, for for the pack which is good value so it may seem expensive at the moment but you know four or five years down the line you'll find that actually it turns out to be quite reasonable value and of course you you get the latest software all the time and as soon as there's an update you can update and uh, we can have even more fun so let's uh let's take this uh this image here the the japanese tea gardens i'm gonna right click 
edit in and go to Adobe Photoshop beta. It doesn't really matter that I use the adjustments because I haven't done anything to this JPEG. So I'm just going to say, yes, that's fine. Edit. So generative expand is available almost immediately. We know that we have the generative fill where we take maybe a lasso tool and then we will go around something in the shot and then it will ask us if we want a generative fill and we can click that and uh, it will it will remove the the item or we can click on it and then ask to put something else in its place so you know we could we could put in a boat there uh, click generate and uh, it, it it will generate it will send the information off to Adobe via the internet which is what it's doing its servers will work out what's needed send the information back and then pop it in your your image that you've got so there you go there's a boat a um, couple of different boats there so I'm not not actually wanting to do that I'm just showing you that's to how we would do normally how we do generative fill but in this case what we'll do is we click on the uh, crop tool here or you can press C um, and then what we're going to say was, well, I'd like to have this image as a square rather than a portrait. So I'm just going to bring it out to the left and bring it out to the right to make it a square. There we go. A little bit more on this side. And once, once you've got the shape that you want, you can just click generate and uh, it, it will fill those gaps for you. So as I said earlier, you, you have to consider the resolution. So for social media, it works very, very well because you don't need an awful lot of resolution if you're sharing on things like Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and here, as you can see, it's gone in. Now, there is a little bit of a line there which I can see. So I'm going to go to option two and that line's still there quite clear and option three. So in this case, it's not done a particularly good job there. It's, it's left a line in there. So let's ask it to generate again and to see what it can come up with. So. Um, so this is, as I say, the latest version. So you tend to get tips in there all the time. Now this one looks a little bit better this time. That looks definitely looks better. Um, let's have a look at the, uh, you can see that line again there. Um, that one's not so bad. And we're back to the first three that we looked at, which weren't so good. So uh, I actually think that one's not bad at all. And if I wanted to correct that little line in there, I could do so by, uh, firstly, just right clicking over here on the layers and merging the visibles so I can bring everything together. Go to the, the remove tool. So that's over here, that's J, or you can click on the remove tool there. And I'm just going to take a small, small brush and just run down that line where it's given us a line. And you can see that takes that line out. So there you go. That was an easy, easy thing to do if we wanted to widen that one there. So if I go back into Lightroom, I'm just going to pick up on the uh, California Street uh, cable car picture. I'm going to right click on this one as well. I'm going to go to edit in and I'm going to go to edit in Adobe Beta and uh, click edit. And there we go. It's opened this one up as well. So same thing. I'm going to go to crop tool and I and in this case, I'm going to say, yeah, I, I want to try to make this this a square as well. So I'm going to bring that out. So a nice square there. I'm going to generate same thing it's going to send the information away and it's going to infill those gaps for us now i do find it incredible that uh you know it can really come up with uh some some very good options there we go uh that's number one that's number two i quite like that one there's a bit of a bit of sky the side there and number three that's blacked out over there so i think uh Let's generate again. Let's just see what uh, another three that it can come up with. Uh, I think it's it's very good what it's done actually, and it's created that square. There we go. That's quite nice. There's something going on over there in the top top corner there. Definitely see definitely see a line there on this one. You can definitely see those lines on those. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh, what shall I go with? Shall I go? I think I'm gonna go with that one. I think I like that one. I'm just gonna right click and merge those visibles. So there you go. We've got ourselves a square now of that image, and it's basically just extended that road and the buildings without too much too much issue. So let's jump back into uh, Lightroom. Let's have a look at black and white. You know how how does it deal with black and white? So let's have a look at this uh, Basilica shop from uh, from Montmartre in Paris. Um, it's a beautiful place, it really is a lovely place. And this is one of my more favourite photographs that uh, 
I managed to produce. And you can see the video um, further back into my uh, my my library. Uh, have a look, see if you can find it, and um, talk a little bit about how we use black and white. So I'm going to right click here, edit in Adobe Photoshop Beta, edit. Same thing. So you know, let's let's do the same thing here. Let's 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 make this into a square. See, uh, it's about there. It's a little bit big that side. There we go. So generate, and we're going to see what it can do with black and white. And it's extremely clever because it is able to, uh, it is it is able to to see that it's a different type of image, black and white image, and um, yeah, you can again. There's just a slight line that you can see there, but we'll we'll go to option two. It's quite nice, but there is a line there. This side come out reasonably well. Okay, there we go. So it has got something over here. I'm just going to use the remove tool just to clear that up over here, and uh, maybe this brush is also a little bit distracting. So just take that out. There, there we go. So that that's turned out quite well. It's uh, extended it over but perhaps this time we also want to maybe put a little bit more sky in the top here so back to the crop tool and uh, we're just going to raise that up just a little bit and we'll click we'll click generate and uh, hopefully it can uh, calculate the extension of the sky into that space let's see what it comes up with it's incredibly clever what 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 we can do these days so uh, let's have a look there so that that's option one that's option two, that's pretty good. Option three, I think option two is the best. Just going to right click over here on layers and merge merge visibles so they're all together. And I just maybe want to take the remove tool and just run along the joint line just to, to blend them together. The remove tool is very good at blending where you have a, a, a line showing. So just, just blend that in and um, yeah, that works works quite well and the last one we had let's go back into Lightroom let's go over to uh, Le Maison Rose here we go so we've got a square image at the moment maybe we want to turn this into a bit more of a sort of uh, landscape image so I'm going to right click edit in send it over to Photoshop beta we'll send it over there and we'll click on the crop tool and we'll just come back a little bit this way and we'll come back a little bit this way and uh, we'll click generate. So you can you can extend the crop in any direction. You can do all four sides at the same time if you want to. Um, it, it, it's it's very clever at what it does. So that's option one. That's option two. Unfortunately, you can see that line there. Option three line still showing a little bit. So option one looks to be the better one. Again, we would probably need to just use the um, the remove tool just to tidy up just to type these areas so I'm going to right click over here merge visible and then I could use the um, could use the remove tool in there look just to tidy up that space there you can see that line so we'll just run down that line there and that gets rid of the line I don't know what this little block is is added on the edge but we can remove that using the remove tool there we go and um, just some things on the edge I don't know what's in the sky there so we'll We'll take that out as well. That works quite well. Over this side, just run along that line. Yeah, and uh, I think that one is actually pretty good. That's come out quite well. So there you go. That's the generative expand function. I think it's it's not as useful as perhaps it could be um, because of the limitation that we have at 1024 pixels. But like I've said earlier, if you are using uh, social media uh, and you're not really reliant on high resolution images, you're able to uh, to bring those together quite well with uh, generative expand if you wanted to make things a little bit bigger. So um, I think it did a great job with the Japanese tea garden. I thought that was very good. And uh, this one also was, was very good indeed. So... Uh, on that note, I, I'm going to leave you there. So uh, as I said earlier, if you haven't already subscribed, it'd be great for you to join me here on YouTube. And uh, I do appreciate any likes that you'd like to give me and uh, any comments you want to make. I, I look forward to reading from them. So for now, I'm going to say bye-bye.